Hello and welcome back to GameSpot's continuing coverage of E3 2015. We're here with Chris and Jeremy from Microsoft. Gentlemen, what is this elite controller you have just uh, brought onto our stage? Yeah, the, so this is our new uh, Xbox Elite Wireless controller. It's built for the demand, the rigorous demands of the hardcore and competitive gamers. Uh, we've been working on it uh, quite a while. When we were developing the original Xbox controller, mm -hmm. you know, we, we made that as best we could for all games, all genres, all hand sizes. But there was always these kind of 1% people that always wanted something more, yeah. something that, uh, that they knew would help them play more comfortably and be more ergonomic. And so we, we, from that, we, we talked to those people, and we went and talked to them and found out what they wanted with a controller. Mm. And uh, from that is uh, what we have here. Excellent. Uh, you guys uh, do industrial design within Microsoft. Um, stepping back from this one to sort of the, the Xbox One controller, what goes into designing a controller? How do you like research industrial yeah. design for Yeah, that? so for, first we talked to the gamers. Like We talked to what's Im important for them. Uh, for this, we uh, we found people that were modding controllers. We went to uh, this one guy. I went to his garage. He was drilling holes in the bottom of his controller to put a, put a button there because he knew the importance of never taking your thumb off the right stick. Yeah, yeah. And so we talked to those guys. Why are you doing this? What 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 advantage is it? And we found there's a ton of people that want these types of things. They want taller thumbsticks. They want different shaped D-pads. They want paddles. They want a shorter throw trigger. Mm -hmm. um, and from that is is where a lot of the features came. It must be a lot of people who do it because, uh, like you know, third-party controllers have always been a thing where people are modifying the controllers. Yeah. Also, we see a lot in, in the, the GameSpot offices of these like plastic like faces that almost go over the controllers yeah. that like sort of change, make it so you can create triggers that actually just like trigger the buttons. That's obviously got its own physical latency kind of happening. Yeah. So there must be a lot of people who want to do this. Is it just the pro gaming scene, or is it is it wider than that? No, uh, it's actually yeah. Uh, did, go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, it's. This, you know, pro gamers were in mind with this, but it's actually for all different types of gamers, mm. like people that just like a different feel, they want something different, uh, maybe even for like an accessibility standpoint, there's things that, that might be better for them, mm. uh, but it's really for all types of gamers that know what they want and know what feels better for them. Yeah, yeah. so let's talk about the details. We've got a couple of cameras here, we can zoom in on it. Yeah. Um, so the design itself, you can break elements apart and like customize yeah. it yourself? Yeah, a big part of what we wanted to do with this was customize it so that, like Jeremy said, gamers can make it what they want. They can get exactly what they want out of it. So we made all of these attachments magnetic. Um, it comes with several D-pads, several different heights of thumbsticks. These paddles on the back come out magnetically really easily. You can put them uh, you know, in a couple different places to customize it to your hand size and how you want to hold mm. the controller. Yeah. One of the other cool things that we added was this overmolded grip. Um, so it's an overmolded rubber part with a, a diamond grip texture. Feels really comfortable in your hand, and we we wrapped it up around the outside because mm -hmm. we know people clutch the the controller on the outside like this. It frees up their fingers to use the paddles here, and we put this smooth uh, soft touch paint on the top. So it, it's grippy, but it's not it's not going to stick your hands there. You mm -hmm. still can slide around and, and you know be comfortable yeah. playing for a long time. And yeah. my favorite aspect, I think, is because uh, I enjoy driving games a lot, and what I liked about the Xbox yeah. One controller with Forza was it gave me a little bit more feedback than uh, what normal controllers do. I go with steering wheel all the time because I can feel the, the grip of the tire, and you can feel yeah. the throttle uh, on that. But you can hot swap between like triggers and also the, the, the throttle on this as well. Yeah, right? yeah, so these can be, be used for, for whatever you want, right? The, you, you can remap any, any of the ABXY, oh, cool. triggers, bumpers, and Forza is a perfect example where we see people, you know, take them off and they'll use two paddles or three if they want to use a clutch and they'll use upshift here, yeah, downshift yeah. here. And it, it enables people to oh, play, in way, yeah, yeah. play in a way that, um, that they might not have been able to do before because they can take advantage of using mm. these fingers. So is there an application on the Xbox One which allows you to do the, cu the customization uh, of the controller itself or is it on a game-by-game -game basis? Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Chris. Exactly. It's a, the first time you connect this to your Xbox One, it will download the customization app. Uh, it'll let you customize not just the assigned functions to the paddles, but really remap any of the controls mm. any way you want it. And what's cool is that you can actually save two of those profiles to the controller. Uh, there's a profile switch here. You can switch back and forth between them you know, during gameplay. Uh, it's, it, you put it right on the controller, so you take it to your buddy's house. Mm. Uh, it's locked there. You've got, your, um, mm. you've got your settings to go with you. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing is if you go to your buddy's house and you realize you want a different profile, so with the app you can save 255 profiles in the cloud, <laughs> Whoa. which is a lot. More than, yeah. more than lot. enough? It's more than enough. <laughs> but if you find there's something that you saved that you didn't put on there, you, you, know, you sign in with your gamer tag, you can actually pull in those settings uh, oh, cool. from, your, from your gamer tag and reassign them on, on any console. 
Uh, is this going to be compatible with the, because I know Windows 10 now, the, the, the wireless controller with the little dongle, is that going to yes. be compatible here as well? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, you can play on a PC uh, with, uh, with a wireless adapter or plugging in USB uh, cable. Mm. Yep. Uh, I know nothing about industrial design. I don't know what it takes. Like I can just about build a table like this, yeah, probably yeah. with carpentry. Uh, what is it about a controller like, controller like this that like pumps it up to hundred and fifty dollars? Like how does what is it that's in this that makes it so much more expensive? Like twice um, expensive as a normal controller? Yeah, the, it, it is times. more expensive, but you do get uh, you do get a lot with that. So like I mentioned, there's there's three different heights of thumbstick sets that come with it. Uh, two different D-pads, uh, these four paddles, this hair trigger lock, um, the app, all of that. Goes, in, goes into that, but it's also the, the actual materials that we use. These are all stainless steel, uh, so super durable, mm -hmm. high quality. That's how we get the magnetic uh, attachment. We've also added this, uh, this plastic ring around the inside of the thumbstick here, so it's a harder, lower friction plastic. It's never gonna wear out. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, uh, duty uh, tested these for over a million cycles, no wear at all. Um, so it's, it's really built you know, more robustly, really, uh, you know, kind of to the needs of the gamers who are really going to try and get the most out yeah. of it. And, and you get oh, this really, you get a really uh, nice case. little yeah. bag. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> we, we know, like, a lot of competitive gamers, the gamers, they, they travel around to play mm. at their friend's house, whether they're playing at tournaments and things like that. So providing them something that they can easily store this in, slip it in a bag, keep all their parts so they're there to switch out. Um, it was really important to include as well. Presumably if you're making an, 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 like a, a controller with this grade that like people are going to spend a lot of money on, uh, making sure that it is durable is a, is a really important oh, thing. Yeah. I know like the, the early Xbox uh, controllers, they had some problems after a while and they were fixed in later iterations. Uh, the PlayStation 4, the DualShock 4, is, I know the nubs on those yeah. rubbed off real quick yeah. as well. How do you stress test this stuff? Is it do you literally like put it in a robot and just have it like yeah, press all the buttons? Uh, a yeah, you times? literally yeah. put it in a robot that does you know that <laughs> yeah. does this that, that presses yeah. that presses the the triggers that tests these you know hundreds of thousands of times so that um, yep. you know we can be confident that when people are really jamming on this thing mm. it's not going to yeah. fall apart yeah. it's not going to fail for um, them. Yeah. And what's like the stress limit on that? Do you say okay if it lasts for a million, we're good. Like if it yeah. breaks after three million, we're good. Like uh, yeah, I mean. The, the, it depends. Yeah, it depends right, on. Right? Yeah. It depends on the button, but yeah, yeah I mean, it is, and it's in the hundreds of yeah. thousands. It's the millions yeah. of presses. And one of the things we did with this was we really wanted to understand, uh, with these type of gamers, how often they were pressing certain buttons. Yeah. And we actually we started measuring that. Uh, for this to create some different specs for how people were actually using that to make sure like, you know, if we extrapolated over a year or two that it would meet those kind of standards. Yeah, yeah. So did you get, was there any interesting data in there? Like what was the like most pressed button? What was the least yeah, pressed button? Yeah, the, the interesting thing there is, and, and one of the reasons we developed this, everyone's different, yeah. right? Depending on their layout, the game they're playing, uh, what, you know, what type of mode in a game they're playing really changes how much mm. they press the buttons. I always so. feel like my Y is probably the one I'm, I'm using the yeah. least. Yeah. Like just getting getting in and out of cars and occasionally changing a weapon. That's yeah, just yeah, yeah. And and that's those are the reasons though. The Y is further away. And uh, like in a first person shooter, a lot of times it's switch weapons or mm. reload. We see a lot of people remapping Y specifically to the paddle, so they don't got to really? reach anymore. <laughs> so it's right there for them. No yeah. more of that. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for coming on and showing us the uh, Xbox Elite controller. When is it available? Uh, it'll be available in October uh, for uh, $149.99. Awesome. And I would be completely irresponsible to get you guys up here and not ask a question that's been plaguing me for years. What the hell do you call the two buttons? Here and here. Is it boxes <laughs> and lines? What are the uh, official names? <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> so we have some internal funny names for them, but okay. they're actually, uh, this one is the view button, and this is the menu button. View and menu. Yeah. View, and, view menu. and menu. View and yeah. menu. All right, straight from the horse's <laughs> mouth. View folks. and menu. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Uh, I really you. appreciate your time. Uh, view and menu. There we go. Done. Yeah. We can put it to bed. Uh, thanks very much for watching the GameSpot E3 show for. We got loads more games coming up right here on GameSpot.com. Stay tuned.